The five key tests you will be sent as a trader and will you pass? Stick around. Hey guys, warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining me. Okay, so five key tests you will absolutely, definitely be sent as a trader. Early in your career, middle of your career, wherever. You might be sent these tests multiple times, but the key is, is that if you pass these tests, the next time you're sent a test, you can draw on the confidence that you passed it the first time. And the challenge you have is if you don't pass it, you have to be sent it again to know that you can pass it and to build the confidence. So if that doesn't make any sense, the point is if you're sent any of these tests, focus on passing the test. Focus on saying this is the test. If I pass this, at least then if it's sent again, I know I can pass it, but actually, in fact, I don't need it to be sent again to prove that I passed it. So you don't want to have these tests sent to you. You don't want to do these things, but sometimes they hit you. So what are the five things? And the important thing is, guys, if these come your way as a trader, new trader, uh, intermediate, whatever, think of them as this is a test. If I can just pass this, I will be one step closer to being to where I want to be as a trader. Number one, hitting your loss limit. You will, this is a common one, and it comes up frequently if you're a day trader, your daily loss limit, swing trader, weekly loss limit, etc. You will hit your loss limit. And it is basically your loss limit. You decide in your trading plan, in your rules, I will not risk more than 800 pounds today, 50 pounds, 5,000 pounds, whatever size you're trading is relevant. It's the rules that are tailored for your trading, and you will hit that. And you will sit there and you will go, I can keep trading and I'm sure I can make this a green day or a green week. Uh, I'll keep trading or I won't keep trading. And your decision and where you go in that fork in the road is gonna mean a lot. Because if you go, and actually, you know what guys, I've been in this position many times before uh, and I know what it's like, but now I know that I've, you know, I've, I've had a lot of pressure on me early days of my trading career, 2004, 2005, very challenging. Uh, and, and this would come regularly. And it's kind of, you have to then get good at fixing this and good at dealing with it. So you get that decision, you have to say, and it's hard because you want to continue. Something in you saying, I can make this a good week, I can make this a good day, I'm gonna keep fighting, I'm gonna keep trading, I'm gonna miss out. No, you have to say, no, it's not enough, stop. This is for long-term trading success, not what's happening today, not what's happening in the week. Stop trading, you said you would stop trading at this loss limit, you've hit your loss limit, now just stop. It's a test. Because if you don't stop, what are you doing? You're not trusting yourself. You know you're not gonna do what you say you're gonna do. You don't believe what you say you're gonna say. You're saying, I know better in the heat of the moment than I do when I'm carefully writing down my plan in the evening, late of night, whatever you're doing, writing down your trading plan, your rules. You're saying you know better now. Your chimp, your inner chimp, we talk about this chimp with the chimp paradox, you know, it's overruling you. And you've gotta take control of it and go, no. I said I'd stop at this. I might not agree with it right a second. I might hate to do it, but I said I was gonna do it, so I'm gonna stop. That's gonna be test number one. Test number two, being almost perfectly wrong. You will be perfectly wrong. What do I mean by this? You will go high at the top tick, along at the top tick, should I say, along at the high, it will reverse. You'll then go short, it will then take out the high. You will do, and I know, I know if you're watching this, you've done this, because I've certainly done this, sold the low, bought the high, bought a pullback that's gone lower, stopped me out, done this and the other, and that's fine but it's there as a test to see if it triggers you into tilt trading. Tilt trading being a trading type where you're just firing away, trying to get your money back. I wanna get money, I wanna get money back. I wanna get back to where I was. I was up here before, now I wanna get back, bang, bang, bang. And you end up digging a big hole for yourself. You get frustrated, you get annoyed, you get angry, you feel disgusted with yourself. That's not what you wanna be. Deal with the fact that as an active trader, especially if you're a day trader, you will do the wrong thing almost perfectly a few trades in a row and you will just sit there and go, how is this even possible? But again, it doesn't matter on a very short term window or number of trades, it's irrelevant. It's what you're doing in the bigger pitch that matters. You can pick any trade and go, that's the worst trade possible, but that's what risk management's for. That's what day loss limits are for, so that when you're out of tune with the market, which we can be, you know, and that's normal, we're gonna have periods of drawdown, periods of stagnation, periods where things aren't going very well, periods where the market's not doing much, all these kind of things. And that's what the boundaries are to protect us. But then as a professional trader, an advanced trader, when things are going right, that's when we get the throttle down. That's when we have more size on, that's when we have more position size on, that's when we have more, a bit more aggressive adding to position, squeezing every last drop we can and recognizing the difference. And so being almost perfectly wrong is okay, but it's what you do after you get that test that matters. Number three, 
being distracted and missing a great trade. You've done this, possibly, if not, it's coming. You've thought about this trade, you're waiting for it, like, right, it breaks that level I'm gonna be in, I'm gonna pull back in, I'm gonna buy this, sell it there, it's getting out of this, blah, blah, framed it beautifully. It's a great trade. Then it sets up and something distracts you. Another market, something, another call, you're not looking, you're away, you're this, the other. And it goes and it was the most beautiful trade of the quarter, of the year. And you've gone, I've missed that damn thing because I got distracted by this, why did I get distracted? It's how you react. Again, you'll be tested. It's what you do after this, whether you go, you know what? What's the positive from it? The positive from it is I framed this trade out. I, I spotted the idea. I had the idea. I didn't pull the trigger. Can I do anything to avoid these distractions in the future? Is it something stupid like taking a phone call during market hours? Is it something stupid like not setting an alert ready so that I can see the trade? Is it some operational thing you can change as a trader? If it is, do it. If it's not, and if it's a life thing, life sometimes distracts you, things happen that divert your attention. That is life. You have to deal with it and go, hey, you know what? I missed it. I could have made an awful lot of money on that deal. I didn't, but I spotted it and I'll find another. And again, it's the test. You tested. Number four, having significant drawdown. At some point, normally and hopefully in your earlier years of trading, you will have significant drawdown. You don't want to see significant drawdown uh, you know, in your, in your advance, I don't like using the term intermediate advance, but you've been trading more than a decade, significant drawdown is a sign that your things aren't going right. And most of the time, and by the way, all traders have drawdown, we've seen you know, big hedge fund managers have stepped back and that's the key, it's stepping back. You know, when I know when I have drawdown, I, things aren't working, I'm just like, right, well, just step, put the brakes on, whoa, 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 don't do any more damage. Hard-earned capital being wasted here, take stock of the situation. Are you trading the right strategy? Are you in the right conditions? What are you missing? that is not working for you. Right, identify that back on the throttle again, back to new highs. If it's not working, back on the brakes again. It's that game. New traders tend to have significant drawdown. It's a test. How will you deal with significant drawdown? Preferably, you don't wanna get into the, into the drawdown in the first place, fine, easier said than done. But it's after drawdown what you do. Do you recover? Do you take the time to plod your way back up to equity highs? Or do you punt away hoping and praying that it comes back, take high risk trades, get your equity back up? That's the separator, that's the test. What will you do when you're tested with significant drawdown? A final fifth one, guys. Your trading rules meant you missed a great trade. Super, super common this. You decide on a set of trading rules, however you decide on whatever they may be, day trader, scalper, swing trader, etc. They are X, Y, Z. I will only trade during these hours. I only trade this specific pattern. All right. But then something comes up and you're like, oh, you know, that's a great trade. I won't take it. No, I won't. I won't take it because I'm, I'm sticking to my rules. And that trade is a monster. It's an absolute beast. It's got a massive profit for you. It's a great trade. And that's a test because it's basically saying, hey, do you want to be seduced by this short term uh, price, uh, short term profit? You want to be seduced by a spike in your PL? Because that's not, oh yeah, nice spike in PL. Oh, that's all time highs of PL. Or do you want this, the harder, more challenging path, longer path, but more consistent path of, well, you know what? But my rules said this, I'm going to miss trades because of my rules. That's the whole point. The idea is to miss the bad trades. And every now and then a good trade is going to be missed as well. But I need to keep the structure. Now, do you need to amend the rules and adjust the rules at some time if you're missing constantly good trades? Maybe you do. Maybe the filters and triggers process needs to be adjusted. That's fine. But it's accepting you're gonna miss some trades. Some are gonna slip through the net. Some absolute monsters of trades are gonna slip through the net. And the test is this, is do you stick to your rules that you said you're gonna stick to and miss that trade, or do you go, ah, just this once, just this once, and then just and take the trade. And all you're doing is reinforcing that behavior that trading against your rules is the right thing to do. So that's a test for you. When you get tested, it's like, my rules are my rules. Has it, has it ticked the boxes of the filters? No, I'm not gonna take it. How, it's a great filter. Has it hit the trigger? Has it hit some of those triggers? No, it hasn't. Right, well, don't take it then. And accepting that. It's a test, it's a real test, guys. So, the five key tests you will be sent as a trader, will you pass? Anyway, guys, take care. I hope that if you've been tested on these already, you've passed and you recognize the confidence you get when you get tested again. If you haven't yet, if you're a newer trader, just watch out for these, because these will come and how you react to them is super, super important. See you next one, take care, bye-bye.